Hello weavers, Melissa Jones with Spindle and Loom Studio here. Um, I have a weaving studio in Missouri. Uh, I also teach classes and we have a lot of uh, students ask about these colorful choke ties that we use in our classes. And we usually try to teach people how to do them, but it doesn't always work out where they see the lesson or um, even remember how to do it. They are a cabled um, choke tie. So they're easy to untie and they also hold knots really well. They have a blunt end on one end there and then the other end um, is a knot tied together. Sometimes I'll trim those, sometimes I don't. I do not come up with this. I learned it when I was at Babstuka Basics and I'm sure a lot of other weavers um, use these and love them just as much as I do. I will use them, of course, to tie my warps. So here's a warp I've got tied up. I've got the choke tied and I've got a, a, a nice tight um, choke. I've got the cross tied. This is the cross. I've got the cross tied, sorry, with a choke tie. And I've got a tight choke here at the end. And then I've got several tight chokes tied along the length of, a, of the warp. I'm a firm believer in keeping a warp under control and tightly choked all along the length of it. So to make these, you need thrums, which is the leftover pieces that you couldn't weave on, on your project. I use um, cotton or linen, usually cotton, because I have the most of that, and it's usually 8-2. Um, to make these out of 8-2, you need three lengths of 8-2 cotton. You need a some sort of a quill winder. This is my Swedish quill winder. So a, a manual, um, Quill or bobbin winder is the best because you're going to work off this tip. So we have, um, I'm going to pull out three lengths of this 8-2 cotton. I make these all the time. They seem to just disappear. I think they sprout legs and disappear sometimes. Like I said, we need it to be about a yard long can be a little longer, a little shorter. If you get too short, um, they're hard to tie in a bow around anything and have any length. I'm gonna make sure that I have the ends evened up and smooth it out. This one's just over a little, over a yard long, it seems like. All right, now to um, wrap it around the end of the quill, I'm gonna go under the quill. I'm gonna go around the front you see that around the back and then back around the front holding that with my finger now I'm going to start twisting and start building up twist off the tip of that quill winder see that so there's lots of twist built up there so as I as I crank my left hand is going to work back you're a spinner this will make sense to you because all the twist is on this side of my hand with none of the twist past my fingers so as I'm cranking and building up twist along the length I'm going to move my hand here allowing the twist to work through the end hopefully that makes sense to you so I'll go back to cranking All right, watch the end of that tip. Like I said, my left hand's moving back. That's smoothing. I'm using my fingernail to smooth the um, yarns so they don't have lumps in them. Oh, look at there. All right, that sometimes happens, especially if you go too slow. So what I'm gonna do now, you get to see it again. I'm gonna wrap it around. Ah. I'm just going to finish it up. Okay. I'm going to grab both ends and loop it across the um, base of the quill winder. See that? Even up these, these two ends. 
and I'm going to tie them in an overhand knot. Then I'm just going to even up the twist, and this one is not a pretty one because I dropped it and had to go back. But if you just work that, work along here, and then as I try to do this, you can see it. Sorry, I'm holding the camera between my knees. Then I can just let go and work towards the base, making everything nice and smooth. There we go. One choke tie, all done. Thanks for watching.